Hey there, Cindy Daychuck with Queen Bee Creations. I am, I am currently waiting for paint to dry. Um, story of my life, waiting for paint to dry. I've got two dressers on the go, but it means that I have time to get started on a little bit of a craft. And what I decided to do is, I, I don't know about you, but I like wood stuff. So when I find cutting boards of all kinds of different sizes at um, the ReStore, at uh, you know Value Village, Salvation Army, things like that, I tend to pick them up. One, because I think that they make great little signs and they're good for different little craft projects. What I thought that I'd do with this one is turn it into a little bit of a tic-tac-toe game. And I'm going to do that using my IOD molds. So I'm looking at just kind of using this section, dividing it out. So we need three by three, um, and then having them little handle. So it's something that could get uh, hung away. We'll make the little pieces together, but that's what we're looking to start. So I'm not starting with it painted because I want to be able to make my molds, glue them on here, and then paint it together all at once. Um, but it does start with taking a look at your molds and seeing what you want to do. I have this little, um, this is like a really old vintage one, which is like a trimmings mold, but there are currently trimmings one, trimmings two. You can get them at queenbeecreationshome.com um, or any of your local retailers. So I'm going to start by using this little border to be able to line out my, kind of create a little bit of, of my edging for my board. And I have some clay that's already open. So this is the IOD air dried clay that I'm going to be using. And you just, it's very moldable. It's, it's, you're just going to kind of push it along in your little mold. The newer molds, this one does not, but the newer molds um, are actually awesome because they have this little raised micro rim around each of the different uh, design elements that are on the molds that you're able to push against and almost like kind of use it to cut away your excess clay, giving you nice sharp edges. This is one of the older designs, so it doesn't have it and I miss it. But what we're looking at doing is just simply making a number of these. And I'm gonna have to do a number of the edging. I won't keep you here for all of that. Now, if you find when you go to unmold your things that they are sticking a little bit, and sometimes with some of the more detailed pieces you would want, just take a small paintbrush and brush the mold with some cornstarch, and that would help it release easier. And you just flip it upside down, and in essence, kind of pull the mold back away from your clay. Oh, you can see that I kind of lost that one a little bit, but I'm just gonna push it back together. And so you can see on this that we're just going to, to ultimately glue this down around my edge and I'll come back across here and down around. And for gluing, you can use, I used a wood glue. So um, the wood glue of your choice, you could use um, an E6000, any, any kind of glue that is, is going to work, that's gonna keep it down flat, is gonna work.
can see from the table, I have my 10 pieces all lined up here. And I've also done some florals. So what I'm looking at is one, decorating up the little bit of the top. This will ultimately be the top of the board here. Um, but possibly some of the corners and things too. So for this, I mean, I'm doing flowers, right? That's, that's kind of the theme of this. But think in terms of whatever molds you have. And here you're mixing and matching stuff. So you might do kind of French theme. And so you've got little fleur-de-lis pieces in here or a little bit Edwardian. You've got scroll work. I mean, you can go multiple directions and really you're just going with what have you got? So I'm not looking to make special purchases for these pieces. I'm just really looking at what's going to work. And here, just layering a couple of flowers. This next step, super simple. We have attached all of our molds, we've glued them on, we've allowed them to dry overnight um, just so that they retain their shape. This next step, I'm just simply going to be painting it white. I'm using DIY beadboard, but you can use the paint of your choice, obviously. Certainly, um, you can do whatever color makes sense. But I'm going to be painting front, back, two coats of white, and even for our little game pieces, before I then add whatever other colors I'm going to. I am going to highlight some of the flowers and some of the shapes, and we'll get there. But I do want everything to start with just a nice, even coat of the white so that as I paint it later, I don't have to get necessarily fully solid coverage over all of the florals and things, I can just do some highlighting with some of the color. So, not too complicated, not too involved, two coats of white, and then we're good to go for the next step. Okay, so now I have two coats of the beadboard white, DIY beadboard, on the front and the back. And really, at this stage now, it's just time to be able to add a little bit of color whatever makes sense for you. I have flowers and um, leaves, <laughs> flowers and leaves happening here. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some of the flowers in sunshine, liquid sunshine from DIY, and some in cowgirl coral. And so this also means that half of my playing pieces will be in yellow and half will be in the coral color. And then some of the flowers that are on my board um, will be, you know, mixed and matched in those two colors. And then I have a little bit of farm fresh green to be able to use on some of the leaves. If I don't think it's strong enough, I'll, I'll do a little bit of um, salty kiss to highlight some of the greenery a little bit if it fades too much. But what I'm looking at for the edging trim, I'm not going to be painting that. What I will do is just paint a little bit of the flowers and some of the leaves, add a little bit of highlights, and then I'm going to seal it. And I'm gonna be using DIY Big Top. Obviously, you can use the sealer of your choice. I'm going with poly on this one instead of wax. I mean, you know that I love, I love my wax <laughs> for my furniture. But because this is gonna be playing pieces and it's gonna be a game, it's gonna get a little bit of wear and tear, um, I think it'll hold up better with some poly. 
So once we get that done, a little bit painted up, the poly applied, then I'll be doing a little bit of aging. So we're definitely gonna come back and I'm gonna walk you through that step. All of the paint has dried on my pieces, and so it's now time to seal. And I'm going to be using um, DIY Big Top for this. You can use any polyacrylic that you would like. I'm still going to be applying some wax and some aging dust and things like that afterward but I do want to get this a little bit more permanently sealed since it's going to be a game board and may take a little bit of abuse. So you can apply your wax after a polyacrylic, but you can't apply a polyacrylic after a wax. So you're gonna to want to apply the poly first, let it dry, and then we'll come back and we'll add a little bit more detailing with some of our colored waxes. Um, I definitely wanna add some white wax to this piece because it's gonna sit down into the crevices of the flowers and the leaves, add a little bit, little bit more detail to them because they're fairly plain um, as it is. But then I'm gonna to want to add a little bit of aging to some of this trim to be able to highlight it, get it stand out a little bit more. We are in the final stages of our project and really we're just doing some little touch-ups of things because once this is sealed, you could just use this as it is. I'm just gonna add a little bit more and you can see that some of the detail in the flowers is missing. You miss a little bit of the detailing here. And that's what we're going to do. Now, when we look at our game pieces, um, we're gonna detail them the same way, but I'm going to, before I start that, add a little bit of backing. And for this, I am just using the little foam sticky pieces that you get from for the bottom of chair legs, right? So from your hardware store, from a dollar store perhaps, and you're just peeling off the sticky backing. If I had nails, this would be easier, but I'm just adhering it to the back of my game piece. And I'm doing that just so that it sits down in. You can see that it's easier to be able to pick up and move that game piece than if it was just flat down in there. So it just raises it up a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to um, grab and move your game piece around the board. No other reason. So with these molds, there's a lot of little detail that I'm kind of missing. This is all sealed and I had said that we could use wax over top of our detail. So if we look at Look at those top flowers. They're pretty, and if you look close, you can see some of the detail. But what I wanna do is add white wax. And I'm using, um, this happens to be an Annie Sloan white wax because that's what I've got open. There's a great white wax from DIY available on the website. But I'm just going to push that down into the detail areas of the colored pieces. So you don't need a particular brush. I'm using an old chip brush for this just because I want it to be something that I can get down into all of that detail. So I don't want like a flat 
stencil type brush, I want something that's going to allow me to get down into all the grooves. And you can see that it automatically starts to soften the colors a little bit as well, so they aren't quite as um, harsh a contrast with the white base as they were beforehand. But really what I'm looking at here is wiping, getting that white wax on, and then starting to wipe it away so that the wax is going to sit down in the little crevices to be able to give a little bit more detail to those flowers and those leaves. So it's going to show a little bit of the petals and the veining. You can see the difference between the top that's been white waxed and the bottom that has it. It's softened it a little bit, but it's given a little bit more detail and a little bit more interest. This detail here, where I've got all of those, um, kind of the beads and, and they kind of disappear into this. What I'm thinking is that I want to highlight those a little bit too. And to do that, I wanted to use a little bit of grit. Now, you could go a couple of ways with this. I happen to have um, American Paint Company American Grit, which is just in a, a light gray. I don't want too harsh a contrast in my head. We'll see, I may go grab a different product if this doesn't do what I want it to. You could use Dark and Decrepit from DIY. You could use a dark wax. I would probably use a dark wax, not a black. So a dark wax is a little bit more brown. Um, which ages it a little bit. You could use white wax here, or because I've got the white wax out, sorry, you could use a clear, or you could use the white wax because I've got it out because my piece is white. If it was a different color, I would definitely opt for um, that color. And I'm only putting this wax over top because the grit, because I'm using a powdered grit, it needs something to stick to. If I was using a dark wax, because the piece is already sealed, I could just put the dark wax on and wipe away with my cloth because the um, poly is going to act to allow us to be able to rub back on that piece. Um, and we'd be fine. So with the grit, I was thinking that maybe I wanted a softer color. I haven't used this yet, but I'm taking the powder into a brush and because I have that white wax on, it's going to be sticking a little bit into the crevices and into some of that detail. So I'm just uh, trying to get it down into some of those low areas. Let me get around the square and then. If you were doing something that had, um, rather than the flowers that I had done, maybe on your piece you had chosen to do a lot of scrolls. Maybe what you want to do is take a little bit of gilding wax and just highlight the top of all that edging. That would look especially great if maybe your piece was done in a black. Right, and so now you've got that gold highlighting all of those little, uh, the edges and the details, which would look awesome. So you have a lot of ways to go with this depending upon what you wanna do. But you can maybe see the difference with that little square, just kind of highlighted a little bit more than just the stark white. So I'm going for a little bit subtle here in terms of the aging rather than something that's really um, as, as blatant or bold only because I had gone pretty soft with some of the summery spring-like colors for the flowers and I think that if I went with a, a black or a dark wax it'd be a little bit too much contrast. give this a try give me a heads up let me know how it went for you show me a pic there's so many different directions to go you can certainly for your base use a little cutting board as I did um, that I happen to have on hand but a round cookie sheet with the squared off sections inside it would work just as well 
Um, so again, any kind of item that you have on hand, it's gonna give you a little bit of a flat surface. Have fun with the molds, so many to choose from. I happen to have just used the same painting technique from the little floral pillow demo that I did. You can check for that on my YouTube channel as well. But I just hand painted some flowers onto a little bit of a flat cloth um, that I sewed up into a bag. I'm gonna tie it together with some jute string to be able to keep all of the pieces together, but a baggie would work just as well. Don't agonize over the things you don't have to. Um, but again, let me know how this goes if you give it a try. For the molds and the clay, the paints used, the waxes, you can check out queenbeecreationshome.com or any of your local suppliers. Look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.